I'm Clive Stafford Smith, and it's my dubious honor to uh, chair the meeting this evening. And I just want to tell you what it's all about. We did this um, before in Dorchester a month or so ago. And while there is always a, a fear that souffles don't raise twice, it would rise twice, it was, it was a wonderful evening. And it was wonderful primarily because of the contributions of people who came. The point of all of this is a sort of exercise in Athenian democracy so that people can come up with both what they want to complain about uh, in terms of what's going on in local politics or even broader politics. I was telling Letwin over here at the last time we did a debate in, uh, to, against each other in a very friendly way over in Lyme Regis that we need an international convention on uh, elections, which he has failed to deliver for me. Uh, but I do think that Libya, Libya bears out the need for that. But primarily, I think we're probably focused on local issues. But what I would really be grateful for is if, uh, and I'll recognize you, and we'll go from the left and the right of the room uh, with microphones. If you would say what you're passionate about, what you find that you know, you're critical about, but try to come up with some suggestion of how you would do it better some suggestion of a solution because what, what we'll do is we'll have all of these I'm going to keep copious notes and there'll be a number of ideas we had sort of seven or eight uh, ideas in Dorchester last time and then we voted on them at the end and they were overwhelmingly passed by the People's Democratic Republic of Dorchester uh, but they were interesting and what we want to do is then get those of you who are passionate about particular issues to take them forward, because there's no point just talking about things, you want to actually do them. And we'll want to hear also from the people who want to be our elected representative about what they would want to do on some of these particular issues. And I'm just going to give you a couple of examples, and these are two examples that are not more important than the rest, but they're just things that came up in, in uh, Dorchester. One is this whole issue of whether you have a cabinet system or a committee system in the West Dorset District Council. I should say that these ridiculous things over here, uh, I, I do like to tease John Grantham because last time he hand wrote out his little signs and we thought that this fantastic 21st century um, technology was, was truly spectacular. So I teased him about it and look what he's done this time. He's printed them off. I mean, I think we want a small round of applause for John. <laughs> Uh, and his point, the flip chart boards and you too, the, the flip chart boards and you too John, yes they are I'm sure. Look, the, the, he's really been splashing out for us. This is one of John's obsessions and it's a perfectly valid one that if you look at our West Dorset District Council, 43% of the votes go to the Conservative Party, gives them 67% of the council seats and then 100% of the cabinet seats under a cabinet form of government. And, uh, and we will hear from different people, and you know, maybe John will have a rant about it, I don't know. You know, one thing to think about that is, of course, that's the way the central government operates as well. I almost said works. Um, and so the question, the question is whether, whether we can improve on that. Uh, and perhaps we can, perhaps we can't. I, I, I think we can. Um, yeah, I'm totally unbiased and uh, absolutely unmotivated by my own personal views. You know, another of the things that came up at the last meeting was whether we in Dorset should have a unitary system, and I'm sure someone will want to talk about that more uh, knowledgeably than I, uh, but right now we have a system where you have uh, three tiers, basically, in Dorset of, of the, the, the whole council process, we have 246 councillors. Do we need all of that or can we have a more efficient system? Is localism not local enough? I think sometimes we in Bridport have felt that the West Dorset District Council doesn't necessarily reflect our personal views. Indeed, it was on this very stage we held the West Dorset District Council, the opera, which was an extraordinarily extraordinarily badly written opera by me primarily, along with Andy over there. I did the songs, he did the, the words, and we took a bunch of, um, of rock and roll songs and redid the lyrics, like Can't Get No Council Action was our reworking of, uh, of an old Rolling Stones song, and I'm afraid I was lead singer on uh, We Can Still Recall Gillian Summers, who was one of our councillors, of course. Um, and it was dreadful, but it was quite fun. 
And so there are all sorts of ideas. So what I'd like to do, without more ado, is throw open the floor. And the way we're going to operate is this. You stick your hand up. I'll recognize you. I'm sure I won't get to everyone. And for that, I apologize up front. You say what you want to say. Uh, if anyone wants to talk about that particular issue, I'd like to try to keep it to, to you know, particular issues as we go along. So if you've got a comment on the issue that one person has just spoken about, please do go ahead and make that known, and we'll pass the microphone around. I'll keep some notes. And we'll carry along on that for quite a while, probably over an hour. And then at some point, we'll, um, and please feel free, you know, stick your hand up, say whatever you want, it's fine. And then at some point after that, th there may be a toilet break. I mean, those of us who are unwise enough to have a beer up here, and that's mine, not Oliver's, um, we may need that. So we, we, we may do that for five minutes. But then at one point, I'm going to get these guys to say, you know, just two or three minutes of their views. You know, there's an upcoming election, you may have noticed. I hope that they'll address some of the issues we discuss here tonight and their views on that but it's up to them to say whatever they like. And then, you know, you can ask questions of them, I feel sure. So let's, without further ado, stick your hand up. Who wants to kick it off? Okay, you, sir, your hand was up first. And please be less verbose than me if you can. So try to just keep it to a couple of minutes um, because we'd like everyone to have a chance. Go ahead, sir. Introduce yourself first, if you will. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard Freer, and I'm a campaign member of Adverse, an organization composed of local residents promoting the public awareness to the size and positioning of the potential housing development at Verse Farm in Bridport. Thank you for the opportunity to convey my sentiments to you tonight. I have three examples tangibly exemplifying the non-democratic communications and opposition to Adverse by West Dorset District Council. Number one. In June of last year, I submitted two questions I wished to ask at their full council meeting. I was told I'd missed the three-day submission deadline by one day, which was not the case as I'd submitted three and a half days before the meeting. I was offered an alternative to be represented by my ward councillor, Anthony Alford, in asking the questions. Prior to this, I was informed that he had no time for organisations such as adverse and an amended shorter question lacking in detail and impact and devoid of reference to adverse was read out by him. This afforded Councillor Robert Gould, the West Dorset District Council leader at that time, an easier option in replying to and opposing my proposal. Number two. Adverse recently prepared a petition objecting to the development of housing at Verse Farm. More than 1,000 signatures from Bridport residents were required to insist that West Dorset District Council discuss our, discussed our petition at a full council meeting. A total of 1,400 signatures were compiled and submitted. We were informed by Matt Prosser, Chief Executive at West Dorset District Council, that it would be rejected. The reason as the matter is currently under investigation by the inspector who is reviewing the local plan submission by West Dorset District Council and that would apparently preclude West Dorset District Council from discussing it. We felt further aggrieved that West Dorset District Council had not followed its own petition protocols. The chief exec had not bothered to consult his council members before rejecting it. West Dorset District Council failed to advise adverse of the full complaints procedure and had not carried it out themselves before concluding it was exhausted. The decision of rejection was subsequently supported by the legal services manager at West Dorset District Council. We have recently contacted the local government ombudsman who has again upheld the decision, albeit in draft form, of Matt Prosser rejecting our petition. We are still maintaining a dialogue as part of this appeal stage with the ombudsman on this issue, especially in the light of the local plan modifications released by West Dorset District Council yesterday. Suffice to say, we feel that the exemplification of this undemocratic situation is, as conveyed to you is sufficient to highlight this issue and justifies our attempts to resolve it. Finally, number three. Prior to Adverse's formation in the summer of 2013, there were consultations held by West Dorset District Council to discuss the development of Verse Farm. I recall attending one of these in late spring 2013. 
I only discovered that a consultation meeting was imminent by a conversation with a local councillor. I do not recall any advertisements such as flyers or emails from West Dorset District Council informing me of this meeting. I do understand though that there were some, was some information in some of the local papers. But for such an important topic to be discussed, I felt that a more comprehensive advertising campaign could have been undertaken by the West Dorset District Council. Furthermore, other failings of West Dorset District Council are an inadequate consultation process, for example the local plan, changes to the housing allocations to various towns which seem to suit the needs of West Dorset District Council cabinet members to appease voters in their own towns, for example Sherborne, that the verse farm proposal does not adhere to the national planning policy framework. Finally, the current local plan for Bridport does not respect the character of the town or its sustainable development. So in conclusion, I hope I've convinced many of you that currently the West Dorset District Council as they are, an autocratic organisation who do not uphold the required democratic process expected and deserving of the residents of West Dorset. I am therefore in total support of the motion to insist that a more unshackled public debate and the promotion of transparency should be conducted by West Dorset District Council in the future. Let us, not forget, sorry, let us not forget that WDC are elected representatives of ours, not an autonomous organisation who currently perpetrate their own hidden agendas. Thank you very much for your attention and an opportunity to speak to you all tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have, before you sit down then, I mean, do you have any proposals about what we should do about democracy uh, in the I council? think potentially the cabinet system uh, should be scrapped and the, and the committee system should be should be uh, su supersede it. Failing that, I think the cabinet system would work better if it had cross-party representation, not as it is at the moment, where it's all, all, all Tory councillors. Okay. All right, what about anyone else? Thank you. Any, I mean, that, that's basically as much about Viz Farm as it is about uh, the WDDC. Does anyone have a particular thing they would like to share on Viz Farm? Okay.